talked about how to outline and prepare the basic five paragraph school essay. And we actually wrote one live on the screen after responding to a sample prompt, not from any of our courses, but a prompt that was composed in the way that they look in our English 3 and English 4 classes. What I want to do now is share with you some information about how to go even further and into the details of how to open and close an essay, which I think of as a way to frame the essay. If the middle of the essay is acceptable, a strong opening and a strong closing can make it seem even better than what it might have been. So we'll add on to what we learned in the last lesson with this information. The first and the last paragraph are the most important, and this would apply to an article, to a TV show or a movie, to a speech. If it starts off strong, people will have a good impression for the, how they receive the rest of the information. If it ends strong, then the reader will also have a good impression for how the thing ended up. So even if they can't remember all the details in the middle, if they started in a good mood and then they finish in a good mood, they will give an awful lot more credibility to what happened in the middle. So we're going to spend some time thinking about how to start and how to end, which oftentimes students will tell me this is the toughest thing for them. How do I start the essay? Last time we talked about outlining is a way to get your thoughts together now we're going to get into the actual writing of the piece. So how do I start? And I'll give you a basic ABC formula for this. First, you have to think about your audience, and this will become very important in a moment. But oftentimes our essay prompts give you a specific audience to whom you are writing or speaking. One of them I know has you prepare a speech as if you're going to speak to the school board. Another one has you writing a letter as if you were sending it to a politician. So if it does have that specific information, put yourself in mind of who the person is that would be reading or hearing your essay, and that will help you flavor it towards them. Next, we build the body of the essay. This is where you put in your facts, your examples, your personal experiences, statistics, whatever evidence you can bring to it. And when I say evidence, remember, it could be things from your readings. It could be things from research, but sometimes just a personal story of an experience that has happened to you or someone that you know could also be evidence because what you're showing is that the thing you're describing really has happened to someone. And then in your closing, I think what you're doing is you're closing a loop. You're closing a circle where the ending of your essay should reach back to something you said in the start of your essay. The beginning is kind of like a promise where you are telling the reader, here's what I'm going to talk about and this is what I'm going to convince you about. In the closing, like a lawyer finishing a case, you're saying, and haven't I proven what I set out to say? Didn't I show you examples that support my position? So A, B, C, do the audience, do the body, do the closing. And I think that will set you up for good success. If the audience is positive to your idea, if you think your audience would want to hear the kinds of things that you have to say, if you're speaking to an audience of people like yourself. So if you're a student writing to other students, then maybe the audience would be more favorable to you. And in that case, you can use what is called direct order, where you can start with your main idea, your main proposition right at the beginning. And we'll look at that as an example in a moment. If you think the audience is negative to your point, like one of your essays has you writing for or against a proposed school policy. Well, if you're going to be against that new idea, you know you're going to have some negative energy by your reader. Or if there's nothing you can do to figure out how the reader might take it, then I would treat that as potentially negative because you don't know, 
and we would use indirect order where you build yourself up to a strong conclusion. And I've got a way for you to take a look at that physically. Remember, direct order, you can start with your opinion because you have a friendly audience who's going to be receptive to what you have to say. In direct order, you're going to want to build up to your opinion to kind of talk me into it. So when we build the body, the order that you use gives you the plan for laying out the body. The facts that you put in order will have to do with how you felt about your audience. So that's why you got to do step A before you do step B. In direct order, for our five paragraph essay, I would start with my conclusion. So I would take my position for or against whatever it is. I would then follow that up with my strongest piece from my body that was my most powerful piece of evidence. Then my third paragraph would be the next strongest thing. Fourth paragraph might be an additional detail or an example. So you see it's starting to get weaker. And then at the end, I would just summarize the points that I have made. But in the indirect, see our order is completely reversed because in indirect, I don't know how the audience is going to take it. So I'm going to have to kind of walk them down a path. So I'll preview the topic. I'll give you a supporting fact. Then in the third paragraph, I will get even stronger then in my last body paragraph, I'll give you my strongest, most convincing piece of information yet, because now I want to get stronger and stronger and stronger to lead you to my conclusion, or I hope the reader or listener would agree with me. So you see how that's different depending upon your audience. Direct, I think my audience is with me, so I can start right out with something I think they would agree with, and then just back it up. Indirect, where I am unsure of my audience or my audience might be hostile, then I'm going to ease into it by just introducing my topic and then getting stronger and stronger and stronger as I go until at the end, pow, you guys have to agree with me because of all these great facts. If I was to think of them as a shape in direct order, I can start with my widest, biggest, most powerful thing and then my intensity will kind of trail off down, down, down as I go through the essay. Under the indirect, you see the shape really starts out with kind of a weak, small point. Just here's what my topic is. And then I get stronger and stronger and stronger as I get to the ending where I'm really trying to convince you. And then I give you my strong conclusion at the end. So this kind of narrative flow really works depending upon who your audience is and then how you organize your evidence. This was the prompt that we used in the last lesson. Should high school graduates go directly to a university or spend two years at a community college and then transfer it to a university? Compose a five paragraph essay supporting your choice. Let's analyze who our reader probably is going to be. Since we don't have a specific situation in the scenario, we're just going to assume that this is going to be read either by a teacher or somebody at a school. It kind of leads toward this might be advice you would give to juniors or seniors in high school. So now you have kind of an imaginary idea of your audience, but not in particular. This makes me think I can go, though, with my direct order because I'm writing about an education topic to people who are already involved in an educational process. So my audience is going to be people like me. It's going to be other students and teachers, people involved with school in some kind of way. So since we're kind of affiliated, I feel I can go right to them. So here would be my outline in direct order. And my conclusion is first community college, then the university. I know I have a kind of friendly or at least interested audience, so I can go ahead and say my position right at the beginning. Strongest piece of my body evidence would be the lower cost because money is always a powerful topic. Then the next strongest thing. 
community college, you would have smaller classes, you'd get full time professors, you might have more contact with your professors, so the school part might be better. The additional body, even after a two year degree, you could find some good jobs. As we said last time, nursing, public safety, things like that. And then in conclusion, I'll just summarize and remind people I talked about cost, I talked about quality, and I talked about uh, career possibilities. So you see, I start strong and then back that up in less and less and less strength as I come down the essay. So it is that reverse order that starts with power and then sort of works its way down to a fade out at the end. And the summary in the last paragraph is always a nice way to remind your audience of what the good points were that you made in the previous paragraphs. So as a direct opening, and this is the sentence we actually composed on screen in the last lesson, I think it would be better to attend a community college first because it has advantages in cost and quality. These are things any college student should consider. Neither of those is a complex sentence. The first one previews a couple of points I'm going to make in the rest of the essay. And the second sentence, I kind of get students to think, oh, I should listen to this because you're telling me these are things students ought to consider. So I'm kind of hooking my audience a little bit. Not a big paragraph, not a tremendous amount of detail, but it definitely says what my position is and tells my reader why they ought to pay attention. If I was going to do it in indirect order and I was going to use this as my closing, notice I've only added the phrase for these reasons. So this would come after I had presented my three pieces of evidence and all I'm doing in my closing in taking my position is reminding them I gave you some good reasons to agree with me. And that's a nice way to get out of an indirect style essay. So last time when we actually wrote the lesson live on the screen, here was the whole thing. A nice five paragraph basic format school style essay responding to a prompt. So what do I mean about closing the circle? When you make promises in your first paragraph, your last paragraph should show that you have made good on those promises. So we've got some phrases that have some repetition between the first and the last paragraph. The first paragraph says there are advantages in cost and quality and that students should consider what's in here. If you look at the last paragraph, I talk about a student who chooses. So now we've got our student is back in here and he's in the action step of making a choice. I also mention save money, get the same education, have a better experience. So I'm not using the exact same words, but I am using two concepts from the first paragraph to be repeated as two concepts phrased a little bit differently in the last paragraph. This shows the reader, I promised I was going to talk about something, and in the conclusion, look at that, I certainly did. And that should give the reader confidence that you had a plan and that your ideas hold together with good logic. So this is what makes me think of it as closing a circle. You see the way that cost and quality phrase loops down and catches this idea of saving money. And the idea of the student should consider leads us to the conclusion, a student who is now able to make a choice. So this is what I mean about closing the circle. It provides a sense of satisfaction, I think, to the reader because now they can see that what you promised you were going to tell me in this essay is indeed everything that was contained in the essay. And that's where we need to be. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And we will come back to 